Hello, welcome to another video in our series on stats and probability concepts. This video maybe ought to be the first in the series because when folks started looking at some of the other content, some of the feedback that I got had to do with confusion on some basic definitions and notations. So the purpose here is to try to get everyone up to speed in uh, terms of some terminology and some definitions, etc. Here we are going to talk about these five concepts random variables, probability distribution, mean or expected value, variance, and standard deviation. First thing, what do we mean when we start talking about random variables? We're talking about variables whose possible outcomes are randomly determined. And a familiar example is the outcome of rolling a die. The possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six, now, as an aside, formally, if you were to do this experiment, the result is actually pretty well determined by deterministic physics, maybe. So maybe not really random, but practically speaking, if we have a fair die, the result of rolling it would be very hard to predict. And so we treat it as a random variable. We treat it as random. And it's a fair die. So that means that the probability of each outcome is the same. The probability of getting a 1 is 1 sixth. The probability of getting a 2 is also 1 sixth, et cetera. Now, this is an important point here. Our random variable is discrete. So it can take on one of a discrete finite number of values. And, and in this case, there are exactly six possible outcomes. And this here is your discrete probability distribution. P, probability of getting a 1, probability of getting a 2, probability of getting a 3, etc. Here, each probability is equal. It's equal to 1 sixth. An important property of, it, of the probability distribution is that the sum of all probabilities is 1. And that's just an, another way of saying that the probability that something happens is 1. Sometimes we might plot a discrete probability distribution like this. Six possible outcomes, six probabilities associated with those outcomes. Next concept, the mean. The mean of a probability distribution is the long run arithmetic average value of a random variable having that distribution. I get that from Wikipedia. Uh, sort of clear, I guess. Another way to think about it, the mean is the expected value of the average of a large number of samples from the distribution. In other words, if I rolled the die a bazillion times, or if I were to roll a bazillion dice, then the average result would be the mean of the probability distribution. So another key concept, if we know the probability distribution, we can compute the mean. So here's what we do. In this case, there's a 1 -sixth chance of getting a 1. Or you could say that 1 -sixth of the time you get a 1, 1 -sixth of the time you get a 2, etc. You sum up the probability weighted average of all the outcomes, and you get the expected value. In formal mathematical terms, we sum over each possible value times its probability. Now, sometimes we use this bracket notation to indicate the expected value. This, these brackets here, they mean expectation, or expected value, or mean. Different ways of saying the same thing. For this experiment, the expected value, the mean of the probability distribution, is 3.5. Using the same kind of mathematical operation, we can take the expected value of any function of a random variable. So for example, the expected value of x squared, or we could say the mean of x squared, or the expectation of x squared, all mean the same thing. So the expected value of x squared is the sum over each possible value of x squared times its probability. That's what I have written out here. If you do the calculation, you get 15 and 1 sixth. So at this point, maybe you are asking yourself, is that really true? Well, we could find out if it's true by doing an experiment. We could roll a bunch of dice to test math, or instead of rolling real dice, we can use a computer to roll virtual dice. And so let's do that. And the calculations I'm showing you down here were done using MATLAB. You can use MATLAB, or you can use whatever kind of computing environment you like to repeat these experiments. So in MATLAB, the command RANDI samples from a discrete random distribution. 
and the six and the argument of the command tells it to sample from one to six. One to six. Um, so it's going to return integers between one and six, randomly distributed. The one comma ten tells it to return a one by ten vector or list of samples from that distribution. So here's the result of, of doing that experiment, or one result of doing that experiment. Here I got a one, followed by a five, then another one, then a two, etc. Now taking the average of 100 rolls of the dice, I get this result. So the MATLAB command mean returns the average of a list of numbers. And the result that we get 3.57 is pretty close to the theoretical mean of 3.5. If, if you increased this number to a million or to a bazillion, um, your outcome would become arbitrarily close to 3.5. So now let's take the average of x squared. In this case, I'm doing a million rolls. And I get a result that's pretty close to 15 and 1 sixth. So you should try this yourself and see what you get. Next big concept is the variance. So again, from Wikipedia, the variance is the expectation of the squared deviation of a random variable from its mean. And that might be getting a little bit more complicated, so let's work through that definition one thing at a time. So first, the expectation. Okay, so we use our brackets. Again, our bracket notation for expectation. The squared part, here's the square. What are we squaring? It's the squared deviation of the random variable from its mean. So that is the deviation between, or the difference between, the random variable and its mean. So this is the expectation of how far away this thing is from its mean squared. And the squared is important because if we took the expectation of the deviation from the mean without squaring it, the outcome would be zero, and it wouldn't tell us anything about the variability in the population. So we square this difference so the negative differences and positive differences do not tend to cancel out. So the expectation of this function is the sum over the probability weighted values of the function. So remember, the mean of x is 3.5, and, and so again, here we're summing over the difference from the mean, squared, weighted by the probability of each, of each value. So what's the result of this calculation? So we can use a computer to do that. Again, using MATLAB, first we make a vector, which is the list of all possible outcomes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. P is defined as a vector of the six probability values, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, etc. So when we sum P multiplied by x minus its mean, all squared, and we get this number, and that is the variance. How does that predicted value compare to a real experiment? So MATLAB has a built-in command called var, V-A-R, to compute the variance of a list of numbers. So we do the experiment with one million rolls of the dice here, and we get a population variance that's pretty close to the theoretical expectation. Right? So this is the theoretical expectation. This is the result of a finite experiment. And that's pretty good. Pretty close. I think that means we must be doing something right. Next concept, standard deviation. Standard deviation is actually really simple if you understand variance. So standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. A lot of times we use sigma squared to denote the variance, so then the standard deviation just becomes sigma. So here again, here's that same computer experiment for one million rolls of the dice. Here's the variance, here's the standard deviation. Remember the mean is 3.5 here, so in the usual notation we could report the value on the number of the face of the die to be 3.5 plus or minus 1.71. Would that be the most useful way to report the result? Probably not. But leaving that question aside, we have learned that if someone does an experiment and they tell you that their result is 3.5 plus or minus 1.7, maybe you'd say to them, aha, you must have been rolling dice. Okay, now the next important concept gets a little bit abstract. So we have been talking about discrete random variables, like what you get from rolling dice, but most of the time we don't think in terms of discrete variables. Usually we deal with continuous variables, or at least effectively continuous variables. So what does that mean? What's the difference? Well, a continuous real var variable can take any value, right? So how many numbers are there between zero and one? How many real numbers? So actually, there's an infinite 
number of numbers as long as we're not talking about some discretization. So of course in computers there's always a discrete resolution to any variable but we usually don't have to worry about that detail. So since there is a continuum of real numbers, continuous probability densities are continuous. Now hang on, what did I just say? I said probability density. So over here in the, in the discrete world, each outcome has a probability and we have a probability distribution. Here in the continuous world, we have probability density functions or PDFs. And this here might be a familiar looking shape. It is a Gaussian or so-called normal distribution. This is the equation that defines the normal distribution. At this point, we're not going to worry about where it comes from. Just let me tell you that this probability density function has a mean of 1, um, which, is, which is set by uh, this parameter mu. And it has a variance of 1, which we're calling sigma squared. The mean is, is right here at the peak of this distribution, mu equals 1. The variance is a measure of how wide this thing is. So this is going to seem a little bit weird at first, but, but here in continuum land, the probability of any given number is zero. So remember, there are an infinite number of possible outcomes under this distribution. There's an infinite number of possible numbers. The probability of any one specific one of those infinite numbers is zero. Now the probability of a given number can be non-zero, but only if the probability density becomes locally infinite. And let's not worry about things like that for now. Um, more generally, with, com with continuous probability densities, to get probabilities, we integrate the probability densities. So we can compute, for example, the probability that x is greater than zero. And that's the area under this curve for x greater than zero, which is given by this integral. So you remember in the discrete world we had this, the sum over all the probabilities is 1. The equivalent statement in the continuous world is that the integral over the whole probability density function is 1. You remember for the mean we had this formula in the discrete world. Same sort of thing in the continuous world where the sums are replaced by integrals. And you can trust me that if you plug this formula into the expression here for the Gaussian distribution with mu equal 1, you'll get 1 for the mean. To see how things work in the continuous or the continuum world, we can do some more computer experiments. We can use this MATLAB command, which generates samples from a Gaussian normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So for example, here are seven numbers drawn from that distribution. And um, you might notice these now these are not integers, but real numbers now. So if we, compute, if we compute the mean of a population of 1,000 numbers drawn from that distribution, we get something close to 0. And for the variance, we get something close to 1. And here I made a histogram for a 1,000 number population drawn from that distribution. So here in this, in this histogram, uh, it, it's centered roughly on 0. It corresponds to these experiments. If we want a distribution with mean equal to 1, we can just add the constant 1 to the numbers drawn from the mean 0 population. So here is a histogram associated with a mean equals to 1 population. So, and as expected, making the mean equals 1 changes the average from the samples, but it does not change the variance. So remember, the variance is a measure of the deviations from the mean. And let's wrap up with a recap of the things we learned about. Let me point out that in addition to what I promised at the beginning, we got some bonus material on discrete versus continuous variables. I hope this all helps solidify some concepts, and thanks for watching.